sure to check out Ageless Geeks for your figures and collectibles. So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredon18 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the NECA Toys, the Predator Armored Assassin Predator. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look at this ginormous box. So we do get the collector friendly style box which we usually do see with NECA's Ultimate Edition Predator figures and I don't think this is technically an Ultimate Edition figure but it does say Deluxe Action Figure. On the bottom there, so on the front of the box here, we do get an awesome image, which was one of the posters from the movie, so I do love what image they used for the front of the box here. On the left side, does say the Predator. On the bottom, it says Ages 17 and up, Armored Assassin, Deluxe Action Figure. And you can flip open the front here. It is just Velcro, and we do have the window displaying the huge figure there with the accessories. On the other side, we do get a cool promo image of the Assassin Predator, and then you can close that up. Then the bottom here, we do get the barcode of Blood Bust, open nobody cares about, and then everybody who is in on this project over at NECA. Then here is the top of the box. And then the one side here, and this box is very similar to the Fugitive Predators on the other side of the box, and then the back of it does display a bunch of really cool poses you can get the figure into along with some of the accessories. And then there is a little bio right there, so if you would like to read that, you can pause it right now and read it on up. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure over to take a closer look at this incredibly awesome, gigantic Predator that a lot of people really didn't like, including myself. I preferred the Fugitive Predator more over this one from the movie. Alrighty, to get a closer detailed look, and NECA did a fantastic job with this Assassin Predator. Now, one main thing uh, a lot of people were complaining about is the face sculpt is not accurate to how he looked in the movie, which is correct. It's not accurate to how it looked, as a picture should pop up, on how his face really looked. Me, personally, it doesn't really bother me, because uh, I think the face sculpt looks pretty damn awesome. But yeah, it isn't accurate. And another thing is, on both my head sculpts, the right eye is looking more to the right, while the left eye is looking straight ahead, and that is really damn annoying. I hate when you get crooked eyes on a figure. That is one thing I can't stand with issues on figures, is when you get crooked eyes. Another thing, you have to be very careful because this is an extremely sharp figure, especially swapping the heads, it's going to stab your hand. There's a lot of parts that will stab you on this, on this figure. My finger got stabbed a few times, so be uh, very careful with that. Now, the head sculpt, I think, looks great. The paint looks fantastic throughout this figure. We have, like, that lighter green, the darker green mixed in. It looks like there's a little bit of brown as well. Then we do get the maroon lines all throughout the figure, and we get all these spikes on his armored skin on his head right there. And this spike here was like smushed in. I had to try to pull it pull it out and, and try to fix it to have it even with these spikes. So there was another issue right there. Uh, the mandibles and the mouth look great. Very nice job there with the sculpt and paint detail. Man, I hate the crooked eyes, damn it. And then we do get his pred dreads, which are all individual. Then we do get those like bronze uh, jewels all throughout it. And these ones have like little pieces of hair, predator hair on it or something, but it looks pretty cool. And then we do get some nice like uh, sculpt work throughout each dread, which looks really nice. And then the torso here, we do get that uh, that that maroon throughout his armor. And just the, t the texture to his skin is really cool. You get all those like spikes all throughout it, his armored skin. And then the paintwork just looks fantastic throughout the figure. Same with on the uh, back there. Do get all those different greens. You do see a little bit of black as well, like a wash. And then the arms here, the armor on the shoulder is a softer rubbery piece, so it doesn't really hinder the arm articulation too much. I like to put it above the shoulder when I move the arm outward, because if it gets caught in between it, it can damage it, so just be careful of that. Uh, but the arms look good. We do get the spikes all throughout it. And then we do get these sick gauntlets. These things look beautiful. Very nice tiny uh, tiny sculpt and, and very clean paintwork on them. I like the black wash all throughout it as well. The copper wires on there, that like bluish type color with the red or the maroon on there. And the inside of them look pretty cool too. You can see they're like straps and then you see his skin in between the straps there. Really nice looking. And then we do get his loin cloth here which turned out really nice we do get a uh, like a subtle black wash throughout it and we just get some very nice sculpt and paint detail nice paint detail on the silver pieces as well very clean paintwork so far on this figure besides on the eyes and then we do get the 
butt flap piece with his predator underwear underneath. And then the, uh, the, the thighs here, or the legs, we do get the spiky armored skin, of course, because that is his armored skin, the version that we did get here, and we do get the uh, maroon stripes all throughout it. The, the sculpted texture to the skin looks really cool. And then we do get his weird looking feet here, and people are going to ask, and I know are curious, does he stand well? You have to balance him out good enough so if so he can stand on his own. He can stand on his own, but if you don't balance him out right, he, he will fall over. So you do have to balance the figure out in order to get him to stand. But uh, his feet or toenails are very sharp, so be careful of that. He has such weird looking feet though. But overall, I think NECA did do a, a really dope job with this Assassin Predator. Yeah, the face sculpts aren't accurate. And on mine, I have the crooked eyes. I don't think everybody's going to have that issue. But overall, I think they did a beautiful job with the paint and sculpt. But anyway, let's continue on. Moving on to the accessories, we get some pretty cool stuff included with this Assassin Predator. So what we do get, we do get two interchangeable heads. And starting on the left, we do get the closed mandible and mouth face, which is the one that does come on the figure out of the packaging that we already took a look at. And then on the right, we do get my favorite out of the two, which is the open mouth and mandible face. And both of them just were done so well. The paint and sculpt look outstanding on both faces. Like I said, the biggest issue that I have with the figure is the right eye. On both heads, the pupil on both of them are looking all the way to the right and it's even worse on the open mouth mandible face. Like come on NECA, you guys need to be more careful when you have these people paint on the pupils, especially when you gotta charge double the price for a figure like this one here. It's just so irritating for me. I can't stand that when I get crooked eyes on a damn figure but the heads are the closed mandible mouth face is easy to swap out since it's already on the figure the open mandible mouth face i had to run the peg hole under hot water a bit to get it fully on and you do have to be careful when swapping the heads because of the spikes on the heads right there but i'm going to show you how to swap the heads right now so when swapping the heads i would recommend using a towel and you do have to heat up the open mandible mouth face with some hot water with a peg hold. Now this one here to remove it, just pull up on the mandibles right there and it'll pop right off. Now for this one here, like I said, heat up the peg hole with some hot water or blow dryer before you get it in and get a towel. Because when you do this, you're going to have to push down really hard on the head right there. I'm going to do it off camera because it's very difficult to do. The open mandible mouth face, it doesn't make a pop when you get it on so you're not entirely sure when you get the head on right there but that definitely looks dope as hell once you have it on the figure and i think i'm gonna have my figure displayed with this head sculpt here so we do get the two interchangeable heads and then we also get his awesome wrist blade we do get his cannon and then we do get a piece for when you're not using the cannon so we do get this very large wrist blade here which looks great i love the silver paint that they use for the wrist blades for their predators and we do get some nice sculpt detail all throughout it as you can see there very nice look looking and this does just peg into his right gauntlet which i'll show you shortly and then we do get his arm cannon here which turned out really nice really dig the silver paint and we get some nice sculpt detail all throughout it and it is articulated in two spots as you see the two hinges right there and I'll show you how to get that on along with this piece and the wrist blades in a second and for when you're not using his arm cannon you place this on the uh, the hull on his left gauntlet I'm going to show you how to put all that stuff on right now all right so the way you get his weapons on his gauntlets is very simple now for the wrist blade this one goes on the right gauntlet as you can see the notches for the wide pegs right there all you do is just peg that right in like that and then there you go as simple as that now for the arm cannon say you're not using it you take this piece here and the sharper end have it point upward and all you do is just peg that in like that so you don't just have a, a random open hole right there now if you want to use the arm cannon here you just take the arm cannon and the peg is shaped a specific way so you got to peg it in correctly there and then there you go you have him using his arm cannon and like i said it is articulated but definitely some cool accessories included with this extremely large predator so we do get that stuff and then we finally get 
four alternate hands. And starting on the top here, we do get a pair of fists, of course, and then we do get a pair of open hands. And we get some beautiful sculpt and paint detail throughout all four hands. And they're fairly simple to swap out. The only issue is the spikes on his damn knuckles and, and, and fingers. You have to be careful because you're going to end up stabbing your fingers when you swap the hands. What I do is I put the peg downward so I'm not like ha having my thumb rest on the sharp spikes on his wrists. So I'm more pushing on the hand where it isn't as spiky. So just be careful when swapping the hands that you don't stab yourself. But anyway, that is all the accessories included with this awesome Predator. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review, shall we? Now for the height of this beast-sized Predator to the very top of his head. It looks like he's a little bit over 11 inches tall. And then here he is compared to the other main movie Predators. So we do have the NECA Masked Scar Predator, the Fugitive Predator, the Ultimate Edition Jungle Hunter, and the Ultimate Edition City Hunter. And this Assassin Predator definitely is in scale because he is much taller and larger than a regular sized Yaochu. And then here he is compared to the NECA Predator Jungle Extraction Dutch, the original movie Team and T Raphael, the Scorpion Alien, and the other largest figure in my collection, the Storm Collectibles Goro. And this Assassin Predator still towers over that Goro, so you can tell that it is a massively large figure. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectible Smoke, the SH Figure Arts Sage Mode Naruto, the Mafex Justice League Batman, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awakened Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and we do get some pretty good movement with this Assassin Predator. It is basic when it comes to NECA's Predator figure. So we do have one joint at the neck here, and you can get the Assassin Predator to pretty much look all the way up. So that's definitely good. Doesn't really look down too much. Wish he would look down a little bit more, but it still is decent. And then we do get very nice pivot there, as you can see. And then, of course, it does swivel. Then we do get a torso joint here at the upper abdomen, and then we do have a waist joint as well. And that joint crunches forward about that much, which isn't too bad. Only goes back a tiny bit. And then we do get a little bit of pivot there, and then it does swivel as well. The waist here does go forward and back decently, so with both joints, you can get them to crunch forward about that much. And both joints, it does go back pretty well also. And then we do get... The swivel at the waist, I mean the pivot, I don't know why I called it a swivel, I feel like you get better pivot at the waist, but the swivel is really tight on mine, but it definitely is there. So combining both those joints, you do get some decent articulation there. Then the arms here, be careful with the shoulder, make sure that armor piece is above the shoulder there. The arms do go out to the sides 90 degrees, so that's definitely good. They do go up and down. We don't have true bicep swivel, but it is at the elbow joint there, kind of like the Fugitive Predator. We do have double jointed elbows that bend in a little more than 90 degrees. Then we do get the swivel at the elbow there for the bicep. And then we do have the gauntlet swivel as well. And then we do have the swivel and hinge at the wrist there. Now for the legs here, the legs they gave a ratchet tight joint because he is a heavy, a heavy figure. So that was a smart move by NECA to give the ratchet joints at the legs there. So the Assassin Predator kicks forward about 90 degrees, goes to the back, uh, just shy of like 45 degrees. Let's see if he can Jean-Claude Van Damme, as you can hear, the ratchety ratchet joints. And oh my god, he actually can Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's so excellent leg movement with this Assassin Predator. Then we do get a nice hip swivel up there, and then we do have double jointed knees that do bend back all the way, and then we do have a swivel at the knee as well and I don't like when they put that on their predator figures because mine are getting loose on me and and it is hard for these joints to hold up the predator figures so I know over time these are going to get very loose kind of like their ABP uh, predator figures so be careful with those knee swivels then the ankles here we do have an upper ankle joint and then we do have a lower one more at the foot so the upper one here goes forward about that much doesn't really go back too much we do get swivel there and then the foot joint here goes down that much and then 
goes up about that much and then we do get a nice pivot at the foot it can go outward as well and I like that they made these joints really tight so it will hold up the figure so you don't have to worry about the figure not being able to be held up by his joints but overall I think NECA worked in the articulation pretty damn good on this assassin predator and you're going to be able to get him in some decent psychopathic predator like poses and I'm about to show you some of them right about now but anyway, that is my review of the NECA Assassin Predator. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this figure between a 1 through 10, I'd have to give it an 8.5. If you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure, I did get mine from NECA store on Amazon. You could also get it on NECA's eBay account as well. Angel Skeeks does not carry NECA toys in stock, but you can get your other figures and collectibles from AngelSkeeks.com. If you can't find something on there, I would recommend going through their Instagram or Facebook page. I will put more information in the description below and if you would like to support the channel don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell and if you liked it feel free to give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it oh well i guess you didn't like it but thanks for watching i will see you later Let's get into it right away and take a quick look at this ginor gin ginormous what? So we do get a similar style box to NECA's. On the other side, we do get a promo image of the Assassin Predator. Why am I having issues saying Predator? God dang it! You can open this up here. It is just Velcroed, and then it's and then it does display the. Damn! Why do I keep messing up? Damn it! And then on the other side, we do get. Oh my god, why do I keep messing up? Why? Damn it! Why? Definitely is in scale because he is much tar. tar what? Targer? <laughs> Damn you! Definitely is in scale because he is much tar. Damn it, I did it again. You bastard. We do get some pretty cool stuff included with this set. Assassin. I forgot the A in Assassin and just said Assassin. With the sharper end pointing upward. Ah, damn it. God damn you, you little piece of plastic.